is the Ridiculously Amazing Insurance Agent Podcast, hosted by me, Kelly Donna Yupiro. This show is for growing insurance agencies looking to maximize their biggest investment, their people. Listen to the top agency performance partners' clients share their story on how they boosted their performance by executing a plan. Let's head to the show. Hey everyone, Kelly Donna Yupiro here for another mashup. This week, we took four videos all on insurance burnout. If you're an agency owner and you're struggling to grow and maybe your business isn't serving you, these are the four videos you need to watch because we walk you through step by step by step on how to reconnect and get back the agency you ultimately want. And I know this because from time to time, I have been a workaholic and I get a little crispy, a little burned out. And what I really learned by taking the past year to unpack that, unwind that is You know, we got told when we started businesses, you got to hustle, you got to grind, you got to work harder. You know, entrepreneurs are the people that trade 40 hours a week for 80 hours a week. And I think all of that is true. But I also think we all got into this in a reason. And at some point when the business is sustaining itself, there has to be a change in dynamic. Now, hard work is always part of it. I never disagree with that. But I also think we can overdo it. And I think you have to be strategic because as your business grows, you have the abilities to hire the best talent out there. So I wanna walk you through our four steps. The first step is getting back to your vision. Why did you start this business or buy this business? Was it to be a slave to it? Was it for freedom? Was it for flexibility? Was it for growth, for money? What was it? And what does that look like? And this took me a long time and you'll see this in the video. It wasn't something that I had very clear. I had to really break it down and almost take some baby steps allow myself to think that way because it seems selfish, you know? The next step is really going through and identifying, you know, what your time tracking looks like. So what are you spending your time on? So often it's shocking how much of us are doing jobs that we shouldn't be doing, whether it's people we don't think we have on the team, we don't trust somebody, or we think we're the only person that can do it. And we're not even that good at it. So all of a sudden it becomes this thing that we're burdened with. We don't look forward to and we get drained. Then once we go there, the next step is what are those gaps? So there's so many ways today to empower business owners. It's the gig economy. You can find contractors, part-time help. You can go ahead and get virtual assistance. The opportunities are endless, but you have to train yourself to slow down, to speed up, or look at it from the perspective of, I have now, if I could free up these three hours a week, I could go sell more. I could make that money up. And you have to get in that habit. That's why the time tracking piece is super important. Yet people love to skip over it because they think they know what they're doing. But until you track it, you really don't. The final one is boundaries. What are you gonna say no to? It's really easy to get caught up in it. And I have to remind myself as well. I wanna help everybody. And I'm also super paranoid that the next person I talk to is going to be my last client. But I have to talk to that voice off the ledge and say, that's not true, Kelly. You've done this for eight years. This is not a true statement. Your brain is telling you something out of fear as opposed to out of abundance. And we can't be everywhere to everybody. Other things suffer. My health suffers. I put, you know, my husband on the back burner, my dog, my working out, all the things that make me a person and become this slave to this business. And it becomes suffocating. And I'm not my best person when I'm doing that. And I'm also not very happy. And that's when I feel trapped and I don't have a way out. That's why I want to share with you this framework that's really been working for me. So let's dive into the first video and we'll catch you at the end where hopefully we can talk about what you get to do next. All right, so this first video took me a while to get through, which was just the vision. What do I want my life to look like? Because I don't have a ton of hobbies, but I got one, which is a very important step. Um, And also too, like there's a lot of parts of my job I really love. I love what I do. And so it's a little hard to unwind the two, but I also realized the things that I was mad at when I couldn't do it, but I felt like I couldn't work out that really made me upset. If I felt like, you know, I wasn't getting enough sleep or I felt like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't have any margin in my day where this new project came on or this problem came up and it just got really overwhelming. And that's why I wanted to show you guys a little bit about building your vision. So if you build your vision, you're gonna have a great opportunity and remind yourself why you're doing this, give yourself something to work for. So watch this three minute video all on building your vision so you can get yourself into a different scenario. Hi everyone, Kelly Donahue Piro here for another week of videos. And this is all about agency owner burnout. We've been seeing more and more agencies come to us just overwhelmed, working a million hours and still feeling stuck and not getting ahead. And I wanna tell you, I have been in your shoes. 
starting a business and having a healthy dose of anxiety and fear around it caused me to work way overboard. In addition to that, when the pandemic hit, my coping mechanism was more work. What I realized through that time though, is it was kind of an unhealthy habit. And I started just opening my mind up and learning and saying, how do other business owners handle this? What I found was a lot of strategies that broke it down into bite-sized chunks and I realized I needed to go on a journey. I wanna take you through those steps because it's really, really helped me. And if you're feeling more like a slave to your agency than a business owner, I want you to watch these four videos closely. Many of your peers are out golfing, fishing, on vacations with their families on a routine basis and you're sitting there thinking, what is wrong with me? Why can't I do that? Well, I'm here to tell you that you can. It's gonna take a little creative thinking and it's gonna take some work, but we'll get you there over this course this week if you follow the steps. Don't feel like you have to jump ahead, sit in a step for a minute if you need to. But the first one is your vision. I know when I started off on a, you know, the journey of owning my own businesses, I understood it was gonna take a lot of work and I was very committed to that and I had no problem with it. But almost eight years in, I also understand that I have a team now and that my biggest goal is to be the CEO, not necessarily working in the business as much as I was. I had to stop and sit down and say, what's my vision? And in doing all the research, because my brain loves data, I found so many things like 50 hours plus a week doesn't lead to any more productivity. In fact, it decreases your productivity. I also learned that, you know, a lot of times being a scratch business owner, I learned how to do everything. And so I wasn't always giving up things that were below my pay grade, or I couldn't slow down to train people. When I started seeing this and realizing that's why I'm working the better part of a weekend, I understood it. Also in my studies, I also learned that, you know, I needed to free up my brain to have more creativity and to downcharge and to be more present. Showing up on meetings yawning all the time or a few minutes late was never gonna be a good look. And so that really changed my mind. I sat down and said, hey, what do I want? Some of the hardest questions in the world, what do I want? And it turned out that I didn't need anything too crazy. And in fact, my vision was something that I think sometimes we try to jump ahead to yachts and nannies and everything else. Where in reality, what I just really wanted was not to have to work on the weekends, to make it a luxury. If I wanted to work on a project, it was my choice. And I started off with just that baby step. But just freeing my mind up for that and saying, hey, I wanna be more present for my husband and my dog and some of the other things that, you know, feel like I'm always jamming them in. I learned about a very important word, margin. And what was going on in my life anyway, and you may feel the same way, was I had no margin. So when something was wrong or broken or unexpected or delayed, it really jammed everything up and my stress level anxiety was super high because of it. And so what I started to do is say, well, my vision is to not walk around like that. My team in particular, if I look back was saying, well, I don't wanna bother you. You're always so busy. And I thought to myself, you know what? Those are not things I wanna be known as. And so I had to take control of it. So what I want everybody to do is sit down and write down your vision. And it could just be super simple. Like I don't wanna to have to work on a weekend. I wanna be home every night for dinner and not have anxiety about it. Now, this can be very hard to do. I remember sitting looking at that blank sheet of paper as I was on this journey with, you know, various different authors and courses, et cetera, thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know. And that scared me so much of thinking, I don't know what I want. I've been here doing this for seven or eight years. I just don't know any different. And I had to really break it down and take some time and unclutter my brain. And then I realized the second thing, because I had no margin, my brain couldn't even think about it. It was next, 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 next. And so you may need to take some moment, whether it's going to a quiet place, taking a weekend off and just think to yourself, what do you want? And the court, the, the exercise I did may be very specific, you know, like I want to not have to work on the weekends. And if I do, I don't want to work more than two hours. And it really forced me into saying, well, what would I do with that extra time? Because that's a big fear I had. I don't have as many hobbies. And I started thinking, well, what kind of person am I then too? So I'll get to that in a minute. But if you start down with your vision of what you really want your work week to look like, what do you want to be known to as your team? What do you want to be known for as your, to your clients? What do you want to be known for in your family? 
you're probably identifying pretty quickly, just like I did in that, you know, smack across the face moment of I'm not showing up the way I want to, but I still feel like I have to do it this way. And that's what we're going to take you through in the next step. So sit down and write down your vision and write down all the things you don't like about what you're currently doing and all the things that you just can't wait for. So vision, make it just a paragraph, things you don't like about it, the current setup, things you can't wait for. And we're gonna dive into the next video to kind of show you a little bit of how we're gonna organize your time a bit better. I'll see you in the next video. The next step is really, really important. And it's so important because it's probably the most eye-opening moment. This is the step when it's like, you wanna lose weight, but you gotta step on the scale. It's scary. It's another thing to do and you're going to resist it because it is another thing to do but i'm going to tell you i did it and i did it you know probably 80 percent of the way it wasn't 100 percent. it was really hard to do 100 percent. but even when i did it 80 percent, i was like whoa like look at all the hats i'm wearing this is a little insane and being a startup business i had to do all of them at all point in time so somehow my tentacles were in all of these things and i wasn't doing any of them very great I started looking like, oh my gosh, I'm spending, you know, four hours a day on marketing and I'm spending eight hours a day on clients and then I'm spending two hours a day on accounting. And the, the hours just sort of added up to the idea like, I can't wear all these hats anymore. When you see it black and white, and then you take an extra step of saying, well, what do I even like doing? And to be honest, just because I have to doesn't mean I have to like it. Um, and what am I even good at doing? Like there's certain things where I'm the only one that knows how to do it, but I'm not actually all that awesome at it. Either I know how to do it, but I'm not good at communicating it, or you know, I just kind of put it off because it's such a brain tax that somebody else that that's what they do would do so great at it. And so time tracking is gonna be huge. You're gonna see me go through a little bit of the time tracker that we use, but I just want you all to take a deep breath, do it, put it next to you. If you need to have a piece of paper, write it down and input it every day, have a VA input it, whatever it is don't miss this step because it's going to be the, the metric you need to change. So check out our video on time tracking. Hey everyone. So we're diving deep into agency owner burnout, the causes and the solutions. And today I want to talk to you about a little tip that I fought for so long because I just sat there and said to myself, you know what? I don't have time to track my time. I've got so many things going on. I'm going to forget. I'm not going to be perfect at it. So I pushed it off and pushed it off and pushed it off until I kept reading and reading and reading more about time management strategies and it kept coming up, track your time, track your time, track your time. Well, you know, when you see that, you know, everybody says the same thing, you know, I kept looking and searching for books for some other way. I finally submitted, um, actually when COVID first hit, because I was like, well, I'm home, I'm in my home office, maybe this is easy enough. And what I found was really eye-opening. Um, it really, really kind of opened my eyes. Now I ignored it, of course, because you know that's what happens. I was like, this is COVID, this isn't normal times. I've got, I'm not flying across the country. So I started doing it every quarter. And as the world opened back up, I realized, great news, it really wasn't that much different. My mind was playing tricks on me. So I wanna show you a quick time tracker that I like that I think may be helpful. So let me just go ahead and share my screen and we can get to it. So this is a time tracker I actually borrowed from an author. Um, so it's a book called Run Like Clockwork with Mike Michalowicz. I'm actually a member of his mastermind group. So um, it's actually really interesting. You put the date, the activity, the start and finish time, and it calculates everything. And then we've got the work type here. Um, so the work type is I'm doing something like I'm working with a client. I'm making decisions about the business. I'm delegating tasks to others. I'm designing processes um, or designing marketing strategies that are gonna go off to others. I'm in distraction mode. I just spent 12 minutes on Facebook. And it's really eye-opening when you look at this. What I found was I was doing so much in the do phase and that made me feel like I could never quite get to the delegation or the designing the processes of here you go. So we worked really hard last year in creating a whole knowledge base where People can go to get our processes, our information, it's searchable, and we're not perfect at it yet. And some of the processes sometimes you stumble upon are a little outdated, but it helped us give a time where all the information wasn't just in my head. 
And we went under it with the idea that the processes will need to be iterated on. So when we come across a speed bump, something's not in there, we change it and we fix it. We actually required everybody to write two processes a week during COVID so that that way we could document everybody's jobs and it made a huge difference. Um, but what I learned was, you know, what I was getting so caught up in everything that my team didn't have all the tools that they needed to take stuff off my plate. Then we kind of go into this trim trash transfer, right? What's things that we're doing that we just shouldn't be? What are things that are just taking too much time that we need to optimize, maybe automate? What are things that need to be transferred to somebody else? And what's the things that we really treasure and need to be part of our jobs? I think if you're feeling burnout, this is a great place to start. Now, what I did was I would put a little timer for myself, generally every two or three hours and just say, stop for a second, go back, update your tracker. Only took a couple minutes. It wasn't so overwhelming as at the end of the day, trying to think about every little thing. Um, but after a week, it became evident. And usually what I try to do is do this once a quarter as well, just to keep myself honest about where I am as our company grows and my role changes, it's really important. So I wanna say this to you to say, hey, if you're feeling a little burned out, whatever you'd like to do, time tracking is a great way just to open your eyes. It's kind of like, to me, it was stepping on a scale when you know you're trying to lose weight. I have to embrace where I am to get to a better place. And the second I realized how many of the jobs I was doing that was below my pay grade, I started realizing we needed a few more people. We added two people to the team this year, but I wanted to be really intentional about documentation and everything before that. So. If you're burned out, I really recommend it as a confirmed, converted, I hate time tracking person, this might be one of the answers for you. And if you find a time, a, you know, a time management book that doesn't talk about time tracking, let me know, I'll pick it up tomorrow. As much as I've converted, I'd still like to say that there's gotta be a magic wand out there, but I just simply haven't found it. Hope this helps and we'll see you tomorrow. Hi everyone, I just want to make sure that you have resources to be ridiculously amazing, which is why if you go to our, uh, our website, agencyperformancepartners.com and scroll down on the homepage, you'll see a link to take our ridiculously amazing insurance agent quiz. This goes over 12 questions over six topics to see how ridiculously amazing your agency is. At the end, you will get a scorecard to see the areas that you may need to focus on. You'll also be invited to take a very special course, which is how to clean up those six areas, um, all at a very discounted special price. So hopefully you'll take us up on this area of going and checking out our ridiculously amazing agent quiz at agencyperformancepartners.com. All right, now that you've tracked everything and you've seen the number, again, it, this is like the moment you step on the scale after Christmas and you're like, what did I do with all those cookies? Now we have to go through and say, okay, what do I need to fire myself from? Now, this is when you're gonna feel like I don't have any money. I can't train somebody. Your brain is gonna jump into can't, 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 can't because you are in a toxic environment with yourself. You're in a toxic relationship with yourself. Your brain is tricking you into thinking you're the only person that can do these things because slowing down seems like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? You have to start small. Even if it's firing yourself from a job a week, just one a week, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm gonna find somebody to go do it. When you find people who are experts in certain areas, a lot changes. So like I found, I love doing my three minute videos, but I hate doing all the stuff of the project management, getting it to the video editor and writing the social media posts and all that. That had to go, it was dragging me down. It'd be something I'd, I'd eat the frog with it every morning, but I'd rather be doing something higher level. You know, I also found out that like on our payments, you know, we needed to get that as automated as possible. There's also opportunity to automate. And I found some other things just in my day that, you know what, inherently I actually would love doing as a hobby. I love building HubSpot workflows, but I hate doing it when I've got 17 other things to do because it just take a lot of just like quiet time and mental thinking and then communication and understanding. They're just something that can't be rushed through. So we have to figure out all this stuff. And again, it's not day by day, but if you fire yourself from a job a week, you'll start to feel better. And I'm telling you right now, your time is worth something. So you have to be thinking about leveling up all the time. And as you're looking at your time, what you're gonna find is, I could find somebody to do that cheaper that does it better than me. And that's gonna really help you. So now your next thing is to fill those gaps and stop and understand what they are. Hey everyone, Kelly Downey Hupiro here, and we're on our insurance burnout, unpeeling the onion, unwrapping it all. How do you as an agency owner and leader really work hard to get through that insurance burnout? So last time was on time tracking. Once you have this all in front of you, it's really, really important 
to go ahead and identify now what are the things that you need to decrease, right? And this is hard because you wanna be available to everyone. For me, it's I wanna hit my potential. I don't wanna be known as the busy person that doesn't have time for their team. And I wanted to make sure I had time to take care of myself without anxiety. So I started looking at everything and saying, what can we automate? Should we be doing this? Even as a whole team, should I be delegating it? And when I felt myself having those anxious moments of like, well, who the heck am I gonna give this to? I forced myself to say, hold on, that's stinking thinking. I don't wanna be in this position forever. I'm the owner, I have to have a plan. And we did a couple things. One, we looked on Upwork for contractors. So if I don't wanna be writing blogs, I can go ahead and hire someone to do it. We looked at automation tools. What can we automate so that we're not stuck doing it? We have got two new virtual assistants, um, which was a huge help to me. Um, and we also took a look and said, you know, what should we, should I just not be doing this? And really started looking and saying, what are the things that are holding us back? You know, an hour of my time is super valuable where I could be here, but I'm really down here doing some of this stuff because it doesn't look like there's anybody else. We also created a knowledge base at my company, which means anybody can search the wiki and get answers and have processes and procedures so that they can kind of be empowered on their own. And I, as a leader, had to stop and say, hey, before we have a question, did you check the wiki? Did you ask other team members? And what do you think is the solution? And I would do that every single time someone came at me. And it got to the point where people would email me and say, check the wiki, here's what I found, I'm unclear on this. I talked to everybody else, they're also unclear. <laughs> and here's what I think the answer is. And I could just give thumbs up and thumbs down. It took me slowing down though, to speed up, so I can empower other people, train them, teach them. And trust me, it's not perfect. It's a work in progress for sure. But what I wanna do is how I started putting up boundaries of my time to say, hey, I've got these five, six people on my team that I know are smart and intelligent. There's been some boundaries on that. My own personal boundaries of not slowing down. We didn't have documentation, all those things. And we really started getting at that. And I'm saying this to you because it could be as simple as this. I challenge myself, what's one thing I'm gonna get off my plate every week? And it's 52 things a year. Consistency of small things adds up. So if you're feeling helpless and hopeless, you really have to say, I'm either gonna own this and shut the F up about it, pardon my French, or I'm going to find a solution. And between Upwork and virtual assistants, there's so many options today. The gig economy has changed so much and we just don't tap into it maybe for fear or uncertainty. But if you're watching this video, I've done it and I can give you some great tips on it. But the choice is yours to take those next steps. And it doesn't have to be everything. I think sometimes you look at the time tracking list and it's like, I need to cut 20 things. One a week. One a week will help you with your insurance burnout. And that is our tip today. All right, our final video in the series, which is boundaries. You know, I still have this kind of voice in my head sometimes that says, take that client, do this. You know, you could stay over the weekend and just be there the next day. Why wouldn't you do it? And I've just started to learn like, that's not gonna be my last client. There will be others. I need to be home. I need to be at the gym. I need to be doing the things that keep me a good person. And by saying no, I'm by saying yes to something, like signing a client for just a training day, that is brand new and you know in group benefits or whatnot that's maybe not my my total cup of tea right by saying yes to that i'm saying no to me working out i'm saying no to going away for the weekend with my husband i'm saying no to spending time with my dog i'm saying no to being able to work on the business and so what you need to be thinking all the time is what are those boundaries look like and I love sitting down and saying, hey, like these are my unrefutable things I'm just not gonna mess with. You know, I'm gonna go to the gym four times a week, doesn't really matter how, you know, four, I can, I can make that happen. I'm going to do my puzzles. I have a little puzzle addiction, I've got a puzzle app, and I'm just gonna do that every day. And you know, I'm gonna eat M&Ms too, because I really like M&Ms and Doritos. And if I go to the gym, I get to eat those, makes me a happier person. So it's the boundaries part that you have to work on next. Like what are the things that you're gonna say no to and be okay with? Maybe you don't need to be in every meeting. Maybe you don't need to be on every interview. Maybe the staff takes the first ones of it. You have to start empowering people to take on things. You do not have to be the glue that holds your agency together. And that's what this video on boundaries is about. Good morning, everybody. Kelly Donahue Piro here. And um, want to talk today about our fourth video in this series, which is all about how do we go ahead and set up some boundaries on our time. So we've gone through identifying what we want, looking at the time tracking, figuring out those gaps, 
And now it's up to us. And this is something that's hard because if you've built a scratch agency, a scratch book of business, you did it because you hustled harder. And there's a little bit of a hustle fallacy out there. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Well, once you get to a phase where you have the business on the books, you can't hustle any harder. In fact, you have clients that need you, you have team members that need you, and you have a family that needs you too. And so what we really have identified is saying, what should you be in and what shouldn't you be in? We all have this need to be overly connected. When we do agency assessments, one of the top things every agency I've ever been to, communication, 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 but no one really knows what that means. We all want to have our hands in things to know and be a part of it, but the reality is we can't and we have to let go. And there's that saying of, if I want something done right, I have to do it myself. Or, you know, well, if I don't know, no one else can do it. That is the first thing you have to solve. I like to think to myself, I need to keep empowering my team to get stronger. What you teach people, especially your team, is that they can always come to you and they never have to stand on their own feet and have ownership. And those are the things that you need to fix by defending your time, by having boundaries on your time. You have to realize something. When you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So you say yes to a meeting where maybe you're not 100% required in, a first interview for a staff, a new staff member. You don't need to be in that necessarily. And then what you're doing is saying no to your emails, no to your activities, no to working on your business plan, no to that marketing campaign. It's the idea that everything in front of you is yes, so everything else is no. And you have to get a handle on it. I like to think, is there anyone else that can do this? Do I need to be involved? Can I get recap notes? Can we do something virtually? So there's two ways to defend your time. The idea of, do we even need to have this meeting? Is there an agenda? Is it clear? And what is the purpose? Could we do it virtually? There's that saying of, um, this was a meeting that could have been an email. Two, is it a meeting you truly need to be a part of? Are there other people and you just don't want to miss out? That FOMO is big, right? And three, look at all the things you're saying no to when you say yes. You can also do time blocking, which I'm a huge advocate for. And every agency owner always tells me, oh, well, you know, I couldn't, I'm this. This is called budgeting your time. Like you have a budget for the agency, you have a budget for your family. If you have no time budget, all you're gonna do is be a hamster on a wheel. Maybe you need to spend 20% on sales, 20% on managing your team, 20% on marketing. And when those budgets get out of whack, it's just like at your family dinner table, there's some questions to be had about the Amazon packages coming in. And so you need to set boundaries on your time. It's an ongoing practice, and but just like budgeting at home, it's not always perfect. Sometimes things come up, but the idea is you keep getting stronger and better. One of the things about time management we fight against all the time is perfection. It will never be perfect, but it can be better. And we have to identify our role. Just like working out and trying to lose weight, sometimes you slip up and eat chocolate cake. The difference is do you go to the gym tomorrow or do you check in and fall off the wagon? For many of you out there suffering with insurance burnout, this is one of the strategies. It's gonna be hard for you, but worth it in the long run. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed our four videos on how to cure insurance burnout. If you've liked this podcast, go ahead and like it, give it a review. We'd love to hear from you. It's how we get our word out. I don't know if you've noticed, but we don't put any advertisements for anything other than our services on here. So we have no outside sponsors. So for us to make this all work, your word of mouth means a lot. The more you like it, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, the better off we're gonna be. But this is something that's very sincere to me because I do work with a lot of agency owners that have hit this phase and it's hard and it feels hopeless. It feels almost like you're sick, like you have something wrong and there's no cure. Doctors don't know what's wrong with you because it's hard to see your way out of it. So hopefully they gave you a framework to start and you have to be a work in progress. Keep at it and it will get better. Give yourself grace and work on yourself and work on getting the agency you ultimately set forth when you started. Because if it's off track right now, it's just gonna keep getting more and more off track until you address it. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.